Jim here from 3J Music, and in this video I want to talk about 10 things that I've learned having a guitar-related YouTube channel. I've been compiling this list for a little while. This isn't a scripted video. None of my videos are. I just have the bullet points, so, you know, bear with me. And, you know, maybe if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, maybe some of these things will help you. I got my coffee. So let's get into it. Number one, this is hard, really hard to make content. Even though I never set out to be the next Rick Beato or anything like that, um, if you haven't done this, maybe you don't realize just how hard this is. I've been doing this a little over three years now, and I had no idea what I was doing when I started. And honestly, I look back on at least three quarters of the videos that I've made, and, and I cringe at a lot of them because some of them are pretty terrible. So I feel like I'm kind of just starting to find a rhythm for certain video styles, uh, demos and reviews that I do here. And it's taken a while, uh, quite a while. There's a lot of work that goes into each and every video, so when you watch a video on a piece of gear or, you know, a lesson or, you know, just an opinion-based piece or, or anything, um, you know, be mindful of the amount of work that went into that and, you know, whether they have a hundred subscribers or a million subscribers, you know, if, if you feel like they've done a good job or, you know, they're on the right track, you know, give them, give them a like or give them a comment. The reason for those things will become a little clearer later on. Number two is self-editing. This one's taken a while to learn. And, you know, this is one of those things that would apply to not just um, guitar or music, but just about anything that you might decide to do if you started a YouTube channel. I know a lot of people who play an instrument who, you know, would probably think if I started a YouTube channel, all I would have to do is just get on there and play, and people would just watch and watch and watch. That is not true. The, uh, the attention spans of a lot of you, and myself included, out there are, are pretty short. A while back, I heard a fairly successful uh, YouTube guitar player say that he could fake anything for 10 or 15 seconds, and, um, you know, I, I kind of took that to heart, and I've come up with, you know, some repetitive riffs, if you've watched any of my videos, um, if I'm reviewing or demoing something, I have a certain amount of what I think of as, as YouTube riffs, um, you know, maybe, maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds, give or take, and then on to the next thing. Uh, Self-editing is, is pretty important because you can't really just get on there and just noodle for no reason. Um, people will click away pretty quick if you do that. Which brings me to another one on the list, and I don't know if I should call this number three or maybe number two B, but that is um, self-indulgence. I guess it's really kind of a continuation of what I was just saying about the self-editing. Um, you can't just get on and play guitar aimlessly. I mean, I, I guess some people could, and um, you know, for some people that may work. If you're doing demos or reviews, you have to have a purpose, I think. Um, again, back to the 
YouTube riffs, you know, 10 seconds of an example, 15 seconds of an example, and then on to the next thing, the next example. Um, you need that variety. You need to be constantly moving to keep that attention. Number four is a decent microphone. And God, I hope this sounds good as I'm doing this video because I've had some trouble in that area. I've, you know, I've bought inexpensive, um, inexpensive microphones. I have to buy all the gear that's on this channel, so, you know, I have to, have to kind of cut corners somewhere. Some people would say that the microphone for the video is probably not the place to cut corners, but I don't generally do a lot of talking. The microphone I have right now is a Zeal Sound from Amazon. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. Uh, it's better than the lapel mic that I was using prior to that. And prior to that, I was using my cell phone microphone and thinking that it was picking up the talking that I was doing in the videos well enough. Um, I record just about everything on my cell phone and I put the videos together 99% um, of the time using Bluetooth earbuds so to me it was sufficient and to you if you weren't listening with Bluetooth earbuds it, it definitely wasn't sufficient I've <clears throat> I've had older videos in the past where people have said, you know, speak up, <laughs> turn up the volume on the voice. Um, yeah, a decent microphone. You don't have to spend a million dollars, especially if you don't really talk a lot. Um, but you need something better than better than your cell phone mic, for sure. And speaking of having to buy all of the gear on the channel, every idea that you have could potentially be a video if it's related to your, uh, your, your channel's focus. And here I am doing that right now. And this one didn't cost me anything. Sometimes you got to think outside the box. Sometimes you may not be ready. You, you might want to put out a video. You might not be ready with a gear review. You might not have gear to review or demo. Sometimes you got to get creative with the ideas. And, you know, again, here I am doing that right now. Besides, who doesn't love a list, right? Which brings me to the next point, but still a related idea about getting the most out of every piece of gear that you might buy to put on your channel. Um, it's really, really hard when you see these, you know, bigger YouTube guys getting all of this gear sent to them and you're just starting out and nobody's sending you any gear. When you have 500 subscribers or, you know, probably even a thousand or two thousand or, you know, uh, again, you need to get creative there too. Um, you know, I do a lot of comparison videos. If I get something, do a review, and then compare it to something similar. Um, again, the whole thinking out of the box thing. Which brings me to the time and effort that you have to put into these videos. Um, again, you know, try and bear with me. I, I have my list over here, and I'm kind of going out of order because my list is in no particular order. But, you know, that kind of goes along with uh, making, you know, three or four different videos for a piece of gear, um, you know, or back to the original thing that I said about, you know, how much work goes into each video. If you're filming, if you're editing, it takes a long time, or it can take a long time. Uh, you know, so... The quicker you can find a groove, a, you know, a, like a blueprint for your demos, reviews, you know, lessons, whatever it is that you're doing, 
on your channel, the, the quicker that you can find a routine, you know, the faster all of that will go. But it's still, it's never going to be fast. It's, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. And speaking of takes a lot of time, that's going to get really frustrating when it doesn't pay off. That when you make a video that, you know, that you have up for a month or, or two that, you know, ten people have watched. And, you know, maybe if you're lucky, one person has liked. Um, nobody's commented on So I guess the frustration and <clears throat> um, guitar players are a strange group because, man, do they get angry when you ask them to like and subscribe when I'm not making the videos. I, you know, I may be on other channels, uh, you know, watching videos, checking out the comment section, or if it's a live video, the, the live chat. Or Facebook groups. Um, there's a lot of YouTube guitar player hate on Facebook, and <clears throat> excuse me. And one thing that is in there a lot is uh, wow, a lot of anger. <laughs> you know, a lot of anger for the YouTube guitar players that say like and subscribe or. Here's my clean tone, or just a lot of anger in general for guitar players on Facebook. Um, back to one of the earliest things that I said in the video. If you, if you watch a video and you think that someone has done a good job or put in some work or, you know, kind of helped you to make a decision on something to buy or not to buy, um, if it was useful, you know, give them a like, give them a comment, you know. Um, if you think they might have something more to offer you, hit subscribe. I don't know why people get mad about that. It doesn't cost you anything. It's not like you can never unsubscribe if it gets to be too much. Um, I'm subscribed to some pages that I get, you know, I, I get sick of seeing 20 shorts a day pop up on my feed or, or whatever. It, it gets to be a little too much. Um, you know, but a lot of those channels I stick with because there is a lot of useful content there or entertaining content. Um, so, yeah, the the uh, YouTube guitar player hate or anger or, you know, whatever um, over being asked to like and subscribe, I don't get it. I, I don't get it, but, um, you know, it tells us whether we should keep going or not. Which brings me to the algorithm. If you're not liking and subscribing and commenting, interacting, whatever, even if you found the video uh, somewhat useful to you, um, you know, that channel falls into obscurity. I know mine's been in limbo for a long time. The main thing I'm always looking for, or have always been looking for on, on YouTube, gear-related, is either a review or a demo of something. And when that something comes out, and a lot of times, you know, it usually gets sent to the, the hundred biggest YouTube channels, um, you know, the, the first thing that I do is I see it in my feed, and I immediately watch somebody like Pete Thorne. And then, then I go looking for Joey Guitar from Utah, or somebody. Because if it's an amp or a pedal or something, I want to see how the pro does it, and then I want to see how the average guy does it. But Joey Guitar from Utah, is his videos aren't even coming up when you search Orange Dark Terror, because, you know, a hundred people have watched his video, and... He's got two likes and a hundred subscribers, and so in order to maybe find his video, you have to get lucky that it ends up at the bottom of your feed somewhere while you're watching <clears throat> Pete Thorne or 
Michael Nielsen or, or someone who does, you know, really great, really professional demos. So give the average guy a little love. And the last thing I've learned is that having a guitar-related channel on YouTube and making videos has made me a worse guitar player. Because I can fake it for 10 seconds, but I'm spending 30 minutes in front of the camera and not practicing. I'm not complaining about it. This is how I choose to spend time and I enjoy making the videos and enjoy the, the, the interaction of the channel. But with all of that, that leaves you doing a ton of other things besides playing guitar. And I'm okay with that, but I'm not oblivious to the fact that, you know, that that is the case. And I like it. And 500 of you like it. So, you know, thanks for that. And I'm going to keep doing it because I enjoy it. When I don't enjoy it anymore, I won't do it. So that's it. Ten things that I've learned having a guitar-related YouTube channel. If you want to share what you think about that, let me know in the comments. And I won't ask you to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.